tucked away in a tiny South Florida neighborhood are two creatures of interest. These are the bees and the squirrels. Yes, these two fascinating creatures will help us understand AI's burgeoning intelligence and how we can apply it in our day-to-day -day activities. So, how might a bee or a squirrel enlighten our AI journey? <laughs> oh, follow me. First, consider the resourceful honeybee, whose tiny yet nimble neural network allows it to pollinate flowers, recall roots, and cooperate in the hive. Now, back in 2019, the year ChatGPT2 came out, AI brains, their neural networks, were about the size of those little bees, just a million neurons. That tiny brain enabled simple language processing, but like a bee, struggled with complex requests. Ooh, that bee is close. There are two bees that are very close. Consider this fascinating tidbit. A bee's brain is roughly a million times smaller than a human's, yet a bee still navigates and learns and even communicates effectively in the hive. But can a bee write an A plus blog post? Well, let's observe. Gotta find a bee. But hey, B, can can you write a blog post? Uh, no, that's a big fat no. No. Hm. Aha! Now, observe this spry squirrel tallying its winter provisions. Its hundred million neurons and a trillion synapses facilitate a more versatile function set besides just base functions and navigation. A squirrel has amazing spatial memory. They can problem solve. They have much more complex communication skills. Oh, and they can adapt, learn, and mimic very quickly in new situations. Haha, <laughs> the squirrel. Now, why should you care about a squirrel's brain? Haha. <laughs> In 2023, with the release of ChatGPT4, the neural network grew to the size of a squirrel's. You see, suddenly, like a squirrel, ChatGPT could observe, imitate, and learn very quickly. The AI could now quickly adapt to your environment and challenges. It could understand your context, and both a squirrel and ChatGPT can process information for more complicated communication. So, can a squirrel write an entire book the way you would write a book? Well, let's, let's see. No? No, they can't. So, my dear viewer, how might we use this newfound information to help us in our day-to-day -day AI journey? Simple. If you want to get the most out of large language models and generative AI like ChatGPT right now, break up your requests into squirrel-sized tasks. Think like the humble squirrel. You see, with this newfound knowledge, we'll leave the wild next week and I'll show you exactly what a squirrel-sized task is, and next week I'll show you why ChatGPT is so much more successful when you don't go nuts. <laughs> I'm Sir Andrew Davis, and this is what happens when Darwin meets data. Haha, <laughs> squirrels. <laughs>